Welcome back, all you crazy R Space fans. You guys are sadistic for listening to these stories all the time. I like it. In today's episode, we've got a couple stories from some people that need some advice. They're a little stuck or confused. Let's help them out. I'm feeling generous today. First up, stuck on what to do next. I've, 40 male, been in a pretty happy 10-year relationship, married for the last six, with my partner, 36 female. I also have a child that they are a step-parent to, but I have no legal relationship with. The last year, with the pandemic and a new job that led me to be in a new ultra-busy role, first time working extra hours, and led to a lot of disconnect in our marriage. My partner brought up the concerns she has in January and refused to talk about the full depth until we're in marriage counseling, which we just entered last week. So far, this is a bummer, but also pretty normal. Find a problem, start working on it. I even agree with all of her concerns she's been willing to discuss. But then, she got up from the dinner table one night, went into the kitchen to get a drink, and left her phone face up, unlocked on the table. I saw it was with a friend's name I know, and in the minute I had to read it, I found out it was a dom sub sexting thread with that person. I excused myself as I needed time to process. This was a few days before first marriage counseling. I fumbled a bit at first and asked if there was someone else, which definitely led to a blow up on her part, but no answer either. Just some babbling and sadness. Since it's effectively like the convo didn't happen to her, I didn't mention names at that point, just asked about someone else. I forgot that I was so emotional that I couldn't see I wasn't talking to the person I used to know anymore. So I started my own therapy. First appointment is next week. Here's where I am. We're in marriage counseling, and it's easily the best therapist I've ever seen. However, the first session was just background, so the issue couldn't be discussed in that venue. We made legitimate progress talking in there, and I do feel it could be beneficial. I can't see how we can continue without, at a minimum, acknowledging what's going on. The hiding and gaslighting cannot continue. However, as many a friend has pointed out, the growing cognitive dissonance necessary for me to engage in therapy while she won't admit to things is quite difficult to manage. I just started a new job, left the busy one at her urging, and I'm both scared for my marriage and my job now as I struggle to cope. I've started getting ulcers again and migraines as a result. I feel like my body is trying to tear me apart. I guess I'm having trouble reconciling the her I know in a love sense with the person in front of me. So I'm looking at either talking with her about it this week the infidelity, in specifics, or having to keep the space within myself to do so in therapy. My partner has some mental health issues, so I'm legitimately worried about them spiraling, but I also know I can't continue this path for the minimum of four to six weeks of therapy necessary to really work into the issue. I'm just torn between feeling like a monster for hurting the person I loved, who I know is not fully here in front of me anymore, and acknowledging that keeping this in will destroy me. I'm guessing I should just be clear and direct regardless of blowback? What do you think? Well, change 2001 thinks quite a bit. I'm sorry that you find yourself in this situation. She may try to turn the blame on you by blaming you for not being there for her or needing attention. That is BS and just attempting to deflect blame for their actions. First, realize that you did nothing to deserve this. Your significant other made the choice to cheat on you and put your feelings and relationship secondary to their desires. If your significant other has been cheating on your marriage, it is best to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Speak with a divorce lawyer to find out your rights and options. First understand it was not a mistake. It was a series of choices they made to cheat. The choice to not shut down any flirting. The choice to not stop inappropriate physical contact, such as hugs, touches, kisses, etc. The choice to contemplate an affair. The choice to disregard the harm it would do to their current relationship and family. The choice to have an affair the choice to meet for the affair, the choice to remove clothes, the choice to have sex, and the daily choice to lie about everything from the very beginning to the very end until you finally found out, plus the trickle truth lies and lies by omission. Demand that all contact be immediately cut with the affair partner. No more contact in any form whatsoever will be tolerated. Demand access to all electronic devices at all times to check for inappropriate contact and messages. When you get pushback about it violating their privacy, Remind them that they destroyed the trust, and if they want to save the marriage, this is a requirement. Inform them that this is going to take a long time to restore your trust, and that if you think they are continuing to hide things, then it will be harder for trust to be reestablished. Demand a post-nuptial agreement. If you do not have a prenup, 
and include an infidelity clause where she basically forfeits everything if she cheats again. In some places, you can sue the affair partner for alienation of affection. If you win, it awards you money for the affair partner for stealing your spouse's affection from you. Ask your lawyer if this is possible where you live. If there's children involved, demand a paternity test. Expect your wife to push back on this. Probably she will claim you don't trust her. Remind her that she cheated and lied to you about the affair. Don't give in on this. Get the paternity test. Hopefully the children are yours. However, if it turns out you are not the father, this will provide support for claims of infidelity during your marriage if it goes to divorce. Immediately separate your finances into an account that only you have access. Cancel all joint credit cards. Remove your significant other from your life, health, and car insurance. Lock your credit to prevent anything from being opened in your name. Also, secure all important papers, driver's license, passports, birth certificates, etc. Get an STD and STI check. Keep all correspondence with your significant other to prove what she said. Only meet in public to ensure witness for behavior, in case they try to make some false claims. If one party recording is legal where you live, use a voice activated recorder to have proof of what is said also. Set up security cameras with audio around the house and inside. Consider nanny cams as a more inexpensive option. These come in various hidden options, such as picture frames, clocks, wall hooks, charging adapters, etc. Make sure the data is secured online or only you can access it. Check the cell phone records for a list of calls and texts with the affair partner. If you have cloud online storage, check for pictures and documents about the affair. Print out everything so you have proof in case it is deleted later. Make a few copies and keep one in a secure location that your significant other does not have access to. Again, so only you have access. Let all the friends and family know exactly why you threw your significant other out of the house. Let everyone know you caught them having an affair. Get ahead of them trying to turn the blame on you. Do not let them try to blame you for this situation. Do not try to protect their reputation. It was destroyed when they had the affair. Best wishes, and remember, you deserve better. I feel like I was reading a copy-paste, like I've read that before. I'll bet it was a copy-paste that people just paste on this thread. People, get a clue. This is what you need to do. Anyway, moving on. How do I get over feeling like it was my fault she cheated? A few things. I'm in therapy with two different professionals working my way through this. My ex has borderline personality disorder. We have been no contact for nearly three months now, and things are getting a bit better for me. But in spite of my therapy, I have recurring thoughts of self-blame. My ex blamed me for her cheating over and over. It was my fault she cheated. My fault she had to go to other men to feel wanted by someone. She said it was my fault for making her feel unloved because I wouldn't touch her. I feel like it's not unusual for people to leave dead bedroom relationships and even cheat because of them. She's convinced me that I've caused all these behaviors in her, even though she cheated on her ex-husband for the same reasons. He abandoned me. He wouldn't touch me anymore. He was cheating on me, so I did it too. She had no proof he was cheating, and I don't believe that he did. It's more the delusions borderline can cause. The thing is, our sex life was difficult because before we could even form a true intimate connection, she was explosively raging at me, breaking things, destroying my property, self-harming, and the list goes on, all because I wasn't ready to be sexually intimate so early on in the relationship. I explained to her over and over that my behavior had nothing to do with her level of worth and value, but rather when she became explosive and aggressive, it made it difficult to feel safe enough to be intimate. It was a vicious cycle. She derives her self-worth through men who want to sleep with her. Then the cheating started. I didn't know about it. I found out way later. It was always with men old enough to be her father. I also discovered she had been a prostitute since she was 18 on and off, 29 when we met. I know she has extreme issues, but I keep hearing her voice. Well, you didn't love me. You didn't want me. I had to fill the void somehow. And I feel so guilty for making someone feel that low. But at the same time, how the hell could I have felt secure when someone was punching holes in walls and giving themselves black eyes, all because I expressed I wasn't ready yet? I wasn't ready because of her bizarre behavior. Even when we began sleeping together regularly, she never did stop taking up solace in old men. Eventually, she left me for a man 15 years older who she met online. I got wind of it all before she realized I did, and I left. A month later, she had quit her job, left her home and state, to go move in with him. Meanwhile, she searches for me and wonders why I disappeared from her life. She left me with tens of thousands of her debt. Most would say she is sick, 
but I feel like I must have done so much wrong for her to take such extreme measures to escape. She always told me, I would never have considered any of this or had to be in this position if you would have just loved me correctly. And by love, I guess she meant to use her body like the men she prostituted herself to did. No, I'm gonna go with, yeah, she's crazy. But that's just me, and I guess I probably shouldn't say any things like that. Let's see what the community says. Wellman81 says, Saying she has extreme issues is an understatement. This woman needs long-term institutional therapy because she's clearly mentally ill. Remember this, you did absolutely nothing wrong here. Her issues have nothing to do with you. The woman is a sick, manipulative narcissist and was this way before you ever met her. I will say there's a special place in hell for people like this woman. In the future, definitely adjust your cheater meter and stay away from women who have so much baggage. It's not your job to fix broken people. Only they can fix themselves. As far as the massive amount of debt she incurred upon you, maybe speak to an attorney and see what your options are to get your hands washed of that. Franz83 says, Man, stop blaming yourself. She's just borderline, and no healthy relationship with an untreated borderline will ever be possible. I've been there. I had a one and a half year relationship with one several years ago, and it was an effing constant roller coaster. She was an alcoholic, was picking fights out of nothing, the infamous walking on eggshells, so typical when being in a relationship with a bipolar disorder, and had a completely unstable life in every possible aspect, friendships, work, family, etc. Of course, she cheated on me at least two times, and sex between us wasn't lacking at all. And after she left me, she immediately found a new boyfriend she met online. So, this should immediately make you realize there's a pattern and should tell you something. Regardless of whatever issue happened between the two of you, a bipolar disorder will always and inevitably bring mayhem into your life. Emotionally, they're like five-year-old kids in an adult body. I repeat again, a long-term relationship with an untreated borderline is just impossible. Not your fault, not even one bit. Stay away from her, man.